So before we get rolling on this video, I just want to let you know that this video is slightly choppy. I'm going to go inside and I'm going to do my best to edit things smoothly, but this rifle did give us some hiccups. We continued testing through those hiccups because we continued to get data. We still had good stuff going on, even though this thing was kind of a pain in the butt. But this is a no BS channel. Anybody that's been watching this channel knows that. And anybody that hasn't seen us before, we are completely no BS. I paid 1200 bucks for this rifle and this rifle malfunctioned for me and I'm not going to hide that. I'm not friends with Ruger or anything like that. You guys get the no BS review. Enjoy. What's up YouTube? Welcome back. Ruger SFAR extended review, no BS review. I bought this rifle with my own personal money. I'm bringing you an extended review. We're going to put the 200 rounds of necessary break-in ammo, good Lake City 2018 production brass through it first. So we're going to have a first shots, open box kind of review thing, but break-in period at the exact same time. So we did a short of us actually unboxing this thing, which only took a minute. That was just a short. After that, I took the rifle inside, cleaned it thoroughly, inspected it thoroughly, re-oiled it, reassembled it, did what we had to do, put Loctite in the necessary places, now it's ready for today's beginning of the review. So I want to show you guys the features that come with this rifle. I want to show you some of the internals of this rifle, what they've changed to make this thing happen. This is an SFAR, which stands for Small Frame Auto Loading Rifle, but it is chambered in 308. So this is basically an AR-15 size rifle, but in a heavy caliber, heavy hitter, 308. So this isn't the first time someone's done this. This is about probably the third major iteration of a small framed AR. But Ruger did a good job here for the price point that they have. You can find this rifle for about $1,200 or less, depending on you know where you're looking. And it's not anything super special. They don't have it decked out, but what they've done is they've simplified everything and made it lightweight. They've slimmed down the size of just about everything except for the magwell. So we had to keep the same size magwell because we still have to accept AR-308 magazines. However, everything else in this rifle has been slimmed down. Slimline handguard and the upper and lower receiver have both been made to about AR-15 type of specs. This thing's lightweight, it's pretty compact, it's only 16 inches, it's very nice fighting size rifle. Now being small and lightweight is what makes this thing attractive. Generally 308 in AR platforms, or 7.62x51 in the, in the AR platform, is pretty heavy. It's a bigger gun, it carries heavier ammunition, so it's generally not as comfortable to carry around as your M4 style rifle, or your M16 style rifle, your AR-15 style rifle. When you take that 308 power and you put it into a small package, people generally are more willing to use it, carry it, and you know utilize the power of the 308. You get distance and you get penetration out of 308. So being lightweight and smaller with a 308 cartridge, they had to immediately address recoil. They did so by putting a pretty hefty brake on here. This is kind of a tank style brake almost. So it's got big, huge open ports, and I think it's gonna do the job really nicely to tame this gun down. Now a brake like this is not gonna tame down the people next to you at the range if you shoot this. This is gonna get them all hyper and crabby. But for you, it should make the experience pretty great. Make sure you have hearing protection, if not double hearing protection. Since we've already started at the front, let's just work our way back. I just have cheap backup sights on here for now. Magpul wants like $75 at least for a set of MBA sights, and I'm not paying that right now. I'll get to them later. So for now, we just have some cheapies here, but we have a Magpul foregrip kind of a necessity for something that's going to have recoil. The way I use my foregrip, some people use it like this. That's not the proper way, in my opinion, to use them. I use them with a C-clamp style like this, and it's kind of just my backstop, my brace there. So that leads to what I'm about to show you is that their gas block is located right here. It's an adjustable gas block. I'm not sure if you can see it that well, but there is a little turning knob in there. So when I had this gun apart, I did inspect the gas block. Everything seemed good. Everything was stayed properly. Nothing was loose. The selections on the gas knob there are zero, one, two, and three. Zero meaning no gas. Now, why I say that's an issue is because I can tell you right now where I like to hold this rifle and the size of this rifle, I'm gonna be putting my hand right over that gas block as I shoot it. Let's see how fast that heats up the hand. And I'm not gonna start out using gloves because I generally don't use gloves in life, so I hate using them with firearms, unless I really have to. I mentioned taking this handguard off and cleaning it. It's held on by two bolts here. And just a note from the factory, they were not Loctited whatsoever. And that's important to me because after you do shoot one of these rifles with this style handguard long enough, you will eventually loosen these and lose them in the field if they're not Loctited in. Another just personal opinion from personal experience. 
There's only a rail section at the very front to put a backup site. They've cut out all this Picatinny part here to save weight. So there's nothing to attach here. There are Magpul slots here on each side and under. And you can of course fill those up with whatever type of padding material or rail covers you want, whatever they're called, panel covers. Going back a little bit farther, you do run into this bigger mag well. So it's ergonomic as far as able to get the magazine in there. They put this cut in there and that, in my opinion, always helps to kind of drive a magazine in there. I personally like it. I don't know if you do. Typical magazine release here, nothing special. You know, everything else about this gun is basically just an AR-15. You know, we have a forward assist, basic dust cover. The charging handle is pretty nice. It's not, it doesn't seem like a flimsy one. So it's not ambi or anything like that. Nothing on this gun is ambi. Just your basic controls. Again, just a cheapy backup sight because, hey, backup sights are backup sights. For now, these will work. There is a Sig Romeo 5 on this rifle. This is a basic red dot, and I love them. I have them on all of my AR style rifles and some other stuff, but they're just good, cheap optics. You can get them for under 120 bucks usually, sometimes on sale for eh, 112 maybe shipped, but great optic, always works on these kind of guns. They're great. You don't need to spend a whole ton of money on optics on an AR unless you really want to reach out there or get super precise, but these tend to do the trick. Now on the flip side of that, I don't really recommend going with super cheap red dot optics. A lot of companies try to make knockoffs of these type of optics and you know, for 50 bucks, they'll give you half the optic basically, half the money, half the optic. It has a Magpul MOE SL adjustable stock with QD points on either side. Magpul MOE grip with a little compartment. It's not the spongy one, but it still has some texture. There's also a QD point to point out here underneath the castle nut to go along with the QD points here and here. It comes with one 20 round Magpul magazine. That's what we're going to stick with other than 25 round Magpul magazines. Just because we want to stick with Magpul, that's what they sent. That's what we're going to have to use for this rifle for right now, along with M80 ball ammunition to keep it controlled. We're going to definitely explore other magazines and ammunitions in the future. Anybody that knows my videos know that I don't just stop with one video on a review for a gun. I keep going. We test guns. Like I said, Magpul 20 round or 25 round magazines and one brand spanking new case of M80 ball ammunition. Now this is 2018 manufacture, or at least delivery. So this was before all the crap hit the fan with the ammo and we had to worry about quality control issues and things like that. I've been saving this ammo for something, I didn't know what, but I guess this is a good deal because they say it's a 200 round break-in period with this gun. That's what the manual says. That gives you enough time to mess with the gas system and just get everything functioning. So, right here, is a bag of 308 awesomeness just for this review. Now before we actually get to shooting, I do wanna show you a couple internals first. So first thing to note, these takedown pins are extremely tight, they're miserable. You pretty much need a punch to knock them out. Everything else about the inside looks normal for an AR-15 type lower buffer tube. So look here at the bolt, we have a dual ejector system and then we have a different type of material supposedly or a different hardening process on this bolt. It's a different color than you usually see, but that's supposed to aid in handling the 308. The bolt carrier group itself has some slight profile changes in it, but that's to be expected on something like this. They're trying to reduce weight. Now I will say that this bolt here is extremely hard to get back into this bolt carrier. The gas rings in here are very tight fit and it's almost miserable to get this thing back in here once you get it out. The cam pin itself is very hard to get in also. I'm, ex I'm supposing that that's just very tight tolerances with everything right now, and as we use it, that'll break in a little bit. Other than that, nothing special to look at. Let's real quick compare this to two other rifles before we get it out on the range. So we have three rifles on the table right now. In the center, we have the Ruger SFAR. Below it, we have the CMMG Mark IV chambered in 5.56, and above it, we have the CMMG Mark III chambered in 308. All three of these are 16-inch rifles, you can see a noticeable difference in the Mark III from CMMG, that 308. It's heavier here in the receivers and the handguard. It's a bulky beast. The Ruger SFAR is more comparable, in my opinion, to the Mark IV because you see a slimmer handguard, slimmer handguard, slimmer and smaller receivers. In hand, moving around, they're all pretty close to each other with controls and ergonomics and all that. It's just the weight difference. Also another big factor here, and we're going to definitely put this to the test, is reliability. A lot of times AR-10s are nowhere near as reliable as AR-15s. There's a lot of reasons for that. I won't go into all of them here and bore you, but 
we're gonna put this to the test here for sure. I mean, I'm telling you right now, an AR-308, if you took 100 of them and put them up against 100 AR-15s, you're gonna have problems out of probably 25% of those AR-308s, guaranteed. Maybe 5% of the AR-15s. So this is the brand new magazine from the factory. And the reason we're using M80 ball is because, like I said, I wanna keep this controlled. This will be very consistent. This is good quality ammo. We don't wanna have any excuses that we create for this gun to malfunction. If we have true malfunctions, we wanna see, you know, everything perfect parameters and the gun actually does something wrong, we'll figure out the gun, not chase down ammo or magazine problems. So let me load this up real quick. There we go, 20. Now that's a heavy magazine, because these are big boys. Like I said, Lake City 2018 production, full metal jacket and meaty ball. So we're gonna put these first 20 rounds on steel right there, just see how it feels, see how the trigger is, see how it runs. That actually felt really good. Didn't spray me with too much oil. I was checking my red dot there, that's why we're so close. Um, red dot looks pretty good to me. I'll play with it for a couple rounds, then we're actually going to zero. That's what the target thinks about 308 today. Well, the Spalding completely sheared the bolt off the hanger, so forget the hanger for now. Let's take a look at this trigger as I pull it. So there's a little bit of take up in the trigger right there. And then boom, it goes. Again, take up, and it doesn't take a whole lot after that. So let me show you guys reset. Take up, shot. I just knocked another plate down back there. So the reset is right there. Right there. Right there. You get the idea. So I'll say that's a pretty good trigger. It's not your basic mil spec trigger, I don't think. It feels pretty good. I don't generally upgrade triggers on my ARs anyway, so I'll take any minor little upgrade. Feels good to me. So let's put a few more on steel to see if we can get to this magazine okay, and then we'll work on zeroing this thing. One second. This thing's actually very pleasant to shoot. I'm gonna have camera guys zone in on the muzzle brake a little bit, kind of at an angle from a distance, and I want you to see the recoil pushback slash rise that we get or don't get. Bolt lock back open. Empty magazine. And I'll tell you what, First magazine impression so far, I really like it. It doesn't feel bad in your shoulder at all. I mean, it's very good recoiling, actually. That muzzle brake does something. So through the magic of editing, we're at a different day. The weather was getting pretty crappy on us really quick. I didn't want to get rained on, so we packed it up. Now we're out here today. We're 25 yards off that target. We're gonna go after the center dot up top. We have 20 rounds loaded up. I just want to check the zero. I made a couple quick adjustments before we went in. So I think I know where I'm at. Let's see how close I got. Now, before we take these shots, I keep forgetting to show you, they have some porting here in the chamber and it's right where the actual bolt is on both sides. And this I'm assuming is to alleviate pressure if you have some sort of a case rupture or overpressure somehow. Nice little safety feature design put in there. I'm not sure how much gas and sound it lets leak out, but they're trying to design it to not blow the whole gun if something goes wrong.
All right, that's five, I think. And honestly, I think that thing's pretty spot on. This gun does gas you a little bit. I don't know if it's coming out of these ports and the wind's hitting me or if it's just blowing past the charging handle, but it does gas you a little bit. Let's go take a look at the target real quick. I'm not gonna argue with that. I don't know how that happened so good on just a couple clicks, but all right, I'll take that. That's a really nice group. I could adjust a little bit, but I'm not gonna fight with it to tell you the truth because I wanna get this thing zeroed out to 100 yards. Um, that's awesome. So that zero with the red dot's pretty awesome. I'm gonna go ahead and pop a few headshots on this guy. We have 15 rounds left in the magazine. I'm just gonna go ahead and drop those out real fast. Let's see how that runs. smoky we're cooking some oil off that's the hottest it's gotten but I did oil it pretty good before we first brought it out here anyway bolt locked open magazines empty it does gas you I will say that but most ARs do so I'd say not a terrible group for that speed as long as you do give it one little extra second over like a 223 or 556 to go ahead and rest down you will come back to point of aim again it has a little bit of a circular I would say recoil impulse but it's not a rise it's more of a steady back so you get kind of a just a circle i'd say in this with the red dot for this lower portion i'm going to go ahead and turn the red dot off and i'm going to flip up the backup sights they're not exactly co-witnessed i'll see where the first shot lands and if it's decent i'll just go ahead and i'll let a magazine go with the iron sights all right let's see if these iron sights are at a reasonable zero for now <laughs> it's pretty high. I aimed dead center chest and I got him in the throat. So let me go ahead and aim low and assume that I can hit in the chest. So I'm just going to let him rip with the iron sights a little bit. Well, we have a malfunction there. I can tell you right now that there is not a round in the chamber. So the bolt is hung up right there. The bolt is over a round that tried to come up out of the magazine. So we would relieve that pressure. The bolt closes. You can see the strip mark where the bolt went over that round. So that some people say is indicative of over pressure because the bolt goes too fast and then strips before the round comes up enough to catch it back here. It catches it right here and it drags and strips it tries to push it forward but it can't quite do it because the bolt's already over that so it is on gas setting number three it comes from the factory on setting three and they say that you should run it at the lowest setting that you can without causing the bolt to not catch the next round so you have bolt override when you're over gas and then you have a failure to pick up around when you're under gas so i've heard conflicting different opinions on what to do what setting whether it's two or it's three for the break-in period for right now i'm going to leave it at three that's what it came in and honestly i looked through the manual a couple times and if someone knows where it's in there go ahead and let me know but for now i don't know exactly what setting to start out with but we're going to try on three so if it does it again we'll turn it down I'm wearing double ear protection because this thing is loud. That put it pretty much where we want it. We made it through another magazine with just a minor hiccup at first. Empty, locked open, pretty warm. So that's 60 rounds total, one malfunction. So not too terrible with iron sights that are not zeroed. I was aiming right here and I was smacking around in here. I'll take that. So I'm riding the gun a little quick right now because I just want to see how it functions. 
Let's move out to the 100 yard plate and see what it does smacking that plate out there. We'll slow down a little bit on the next magazine. We're up to 60 rounds now. Let's put the next 20 on the steel plate. All right, I call it the 100 yard target, but we're not at 100 yards right now. We're at 75 yards. So let's see how we do on the steel plate at 75 yards with 20 rounds. This should be, I believe, 80 rounds after we're done with this magazine. Right, camera guy? Yeah. 80 rounds. Did we hit? No. Uh-oh. All right, so that zero correction, I have to aim at the bottom of the plate to hit this at 75 yards. Because remember, it's zeroed at pretty much 25 yards. All right, so that was a successful 20 rounds. I got all but the first one on there. I can start seeing the shiny part from here. I know you guys can see it on camera before I can see it. One thing that is very distinct is when you're on your last round, this gun does have a lot of spring noise and things going on with the bolt going back and forth. So you do know when you've hit, hit your last round. You don't even have to really look. You check just to confirm, but I know darn well when I've hit my last round. You typically, after shooting AR type of rifles long enough, you will pick up on that, but it's exaggerated with this 308 big heavy bolt and just the whole system itself. So not a bad little group given my conditions and basically just a red dot optic that doesn't provide any magnification or anything like that. And a rub zero. I really like that. That's definitely comparable, if not better than my CMMG Mark III. And just a quick little side note on spalding. Check out this serious spalding we have. So we put that 20 rounds on here and we've started to saw right through these boards. I put these boards here that, so that we don't splash in the mud, but you can just see a perfect saw line. So for those of you that wonder about spalding coming off of, or spalling coming off of targets, that's what we're talking about. All right, so not going too bad so far. We have rounds 81 through 100 in this magazine. We're gonna go through the chronograph a couple times just to get an idea of what this Federal Lake City ammo, 7.62 by 51, 140 grain full metal jacket XM80, is traveling at out of this 16 inch barrel from 15 feet off the chronograph and while we're at it we're just going to go ahead and shoot at that back target for fun too no reading i didn't have my ears in let's see if we can get a reading this time And we actually have something wrong here. I think it had a failure to pick one up. It did feel a little funny. So yeah, there's nothing in the chamber right now. So that is empty. I can go ahead and let one go in. Let me drop the mag though and see what might've happened. I see another scrape where the bolt traveled over this round. So it either didn't go all the way back, but I see the scrape mark starting right here. So I'm gonna say that that bolt might've, again, rode, ridden back too fast. So after this magazine, we'll go ahead and we'll turn down that gas setting down to number two. But for now, let's just keep going at number three. 
I've heard that you're supposed to break it in on number three. So let's see about it. Let's keep going. Twenty six eighty six. Again, another dead trigger, or not a dead trigger, but uh, you know, it went no bang, click no bang. So nothing in the magazine or nothing in the chamber. I'm having a problem with my terms today. So again, you see nothing. Let me go ahead and rack it and send one in there. I don't know now why we're gonna start having problems. So let's send it again. Twenty-six Twenty-six fifty-nine. So twenty-six fifty-nine on the last one. You get an idea of the velocity. I'm gonna go ahead and just write out the rest of these rounds on that target down there. <laughs> and here we go. All right. So here it is. Here's the classic bolt over bullet. So get a good look at that. So you're going to have to drop your magazine and you're going to have to just pull your charging handle and we're going to see where this bullet yep has a dent in the shoulder there and that was most likely to cause just now doesn't have a bad strip mark on it maybe one there a little bit of a shoot up front i'm going to set it back in the magazine and we're going to keep going i'm going to make this thing eat this last magazine So even the chronograph knows we're having an error too. So what we're going to do is we're going to call it for today. It's getting cold and it's getting dark. We're going to turn this gas system to setting two, slow down that bolt velocity a little bit, and we're going to see if that helps it tomorrow. Tomorrow we're going to be on the second hundred rounds. So we've gotten through a hundred. Let's get through a hundred more, and then let's see where we're at after that. Quick editing flip. Now we're on day three. Yesterday we had steam coming out of our mouth. It was freezing cold. Now we're sweating in the sun. That's Ohio. Now for one second, I kind of want to focus on Y308. Some of you might be asking, well, why 308 over 223 or 556? And the answer is generally going to be distance and power. So your AR15 556 typical bullet is going to be 55 grains to 62 grains, 65 grains, somewhere in there. The 308 sling in a 150 grain bullet, 149 grain bullet right off the rip. You can get much heavier than that. You can easily get the equivalent of three 556 bullets in one 308 bullet as far as weight. Energy-wise, it smashes things. Distance-wise, it reaches out. So let's start the power demonstration on ballistics gel today. All right, we have 40 inches of ballistics gel down there. We're 30 feet off that gel. Let's let one rip. All right, there's where we came in, right there. We have a great wound path, kind of an explosive situation right there. Did its tumbling and its curving thing, pushed these two blocks apart. So that's the first 20 inches. Came into this block. This is a used block with some damage in it previously, but didn't affect here. We see the bullet backwards. 
and laying let me go ahead and measure so the bullet made it to right about 30 inches pretty nice all right we have a misbehaving cinder block out there let's see what five rounds does to it All right, malfunction. So that was on gas setting number two for that shot and it did not pick up a round. So I'm not even thinking to check this. I'm just used to the guns working for the most part. So let's go ahead and put one in the chamber and see if we can get five shots out of it in a row. Did not pick up another round. Nope, it's ejecting the brass, but it's not picking up another round. So we have a fancy single shot right now. It is effective at smashing blocks, but it's not effective at cycling right now. So I don't want to stop the testing that we have scheduled, but we're having problems, so we have to adjust a little bit. We have another camera that's going to be on the bolt so that we can maybe capture this non-function. But in the meantime, take a look at this lead plate here. So we shoot these on the channel. These are just huge chunks of lead. This is not my idea. This is Tell Fleiter Mouse. He tends to do this a lot with shotgun slugs. That's what hit this as a shotgun slug right here. There's part of one. So we have another one of these plates down there downrange. And we're going to see what a 308 does compared to a shotgun slug. Not super scientific, but I just want to see this penetration, but at the same time capture the bolt on camera doing what it does. All right, let's check things out. All right, here's our lead plate with a hole from the previous shotgun test. I don't remember which slug that was, but here's our new 308 hole with some, or 762 by 51 with some copper jacket stuck out. I can get my pinky that deep in there. So up to that knuckle, that's pretty crazy. Pretty cool, pretty deep hole. It did not go through the back. It pushed it a little bit, but it didn't go out. That's just a natural line in the lead from me pouring it at different temperatures. Next, let's go after a steel plate. This is one of these cheapy plates you buy. I think it's Birchwood Casey or something like that. It's three eighths inch thick at the most, AR-500 supposedly. We blow through these things all the time by accident when you're up close with rifles. So let's see how we do now at about 30 feet with the 308. All right, I've turned the gas setting down to one. We're gonna give the plate a one punch and we're gonna capture it on slow-mo on the bolt, hopefully. So, there is the empty case. We were down on one. So setting one is generally reserved for suppressors is what they say in the manual. So that of course did not cycle the round because it didn't thrust the bolt open at all. So, another one is loaded. We're on safe and I'm gonna change magazines now. And interesting results on the plate today, we barely put a scratch in it. Sometimes bullets sail right through this thing, but today it survived. Now let's try a brake rotor, different kind of steel. All right, we are turned back to setting number two. We have changed out for a very well used Magpul 25 round magazine, and we'll see how this goes. Did not cycle a new one in. I'm going to turn it up to gas setting three again. Check this out. Gas setting three. <laughs> that was pretty cool, actually. That was so cool, I forgot to check if this thing cycled or not. 
So on setting three, yes, it did put another one back in the chamber. So with the AR500 steel, we barely made a scratch in this brake rotor, crushed it. Straight through, straight through. You can see where it, it kind of chipped it first and then went through. This one just punched through and on the back end, destroyed it, leaves a bunch of chunks of metal down here. Whatever these things are made out of, it's nothing like AR500. We're gonna continue our testing. Now it's becoming double testing, function testing and penetration. Now we have wood. We have two by tens, I believe these are. They're two by somethings. We have 11 of them. They actually, the math doesn't add up, but we have 11 of them and it goes to 17 and a half. So I didn't invent the whole wood measuring system. Don't blame me, but 17 and a half inches of two by tens. Let's see how we do. This should pack a good punch. Boards are probably gonna go flying, but we'll count how many it gets through. I was wrong, boards didn't go anywhere. <laughs> they absolutely didn't move. That full metal jacket pointed projectile just slips right through things. So let's count. We know we got one, two, three, four, five, six, Seven's where they're starting to get stuck. Eight, nine, ten, and it made it through the eleventh board, and it stuck somewhere somewhere here in the backstop. I don't know where it's at, but it made it through at least eleven boards and probably stuck right in the twelfth. So that's one of the big advantages of 308. It's pretty barrier blind, and did the gun cycle properly. There's a fresh one in there. All right, we're going back to setting two for right now because this gun should be able to function for the most part on setting two. We're sticking with the 25 round magazine because that could be a part of the issue. So let's see how our function is now on number two. So I look back here kind of funny because there's a trash can right behind camera guy. And I thought that we had a ricochet, but no, it's just the brass hitting that trash can really hard. That's how hard it ejects it out of here, but it doesn't pick up the next round. Back to setting three. And this is honestly why I usually can't stand AR-10s or AR-308s. We're going to put what's left of this magazine, this 120th round by the time we're done, just into the backstop. I'm just going to dump it and see if it'll cycle on number three. So it did not lock back, but it is empty. So this is kind of annoying. I don't exactly know where to go here because it should function on two, but it's only wanting to function on three right now. Like I said, gas guns are a pain in the butt. I'm gonna go ahead and load up some more rounds, keep it on gas setting three, and let's do some more testing. All right, we have 20 more rounds loaded up into another different mag, another well-used mag. I don't like what's been on the news lately. Uh, you guys probably agree. So let's take care of that with 20 rounds of 762 by 51. Well, we tried to take care of the news. It did get damaged a little bit, but now we have another malfunction. So let's see what we got. Failure to feed around. Let's send one in there and see if we can get the magazine to finish. And again, failure to feed, around. This is pretty annoying. Bolt over bullet. 
So we had failure to feeds. Now we have bolt over bullet. Classic bolt over bullet. Well, this has got to the extreme annoying point. We have a bolt action. It doesn't like setting two. It doesn't like setting three. Setting one turns it into a bolt action for the most part. I mean, the only setting we didn't try is setting zero, and we know what that'll do. They say a 100 to 200 round break-in period, but I'm calling a bunch of crap. This gun is progressively getting worse as we go. No gun should have to go through this during a break-in period. I'm not going to fight these last four rounds through the gun. We made it to 136 rounds. I wanted to go to 200, but I'm not going to fight them through this gun and just waste ammo. This thing's not going to function right now. Let me know in the comments what you think I should do. Let me know what you think about the testing we did in general. I don't think it's all wasted testing. It's definitely not wasted testing when you want to think about is this thing reliable or not? Is this gas system reliable or not? Nice concept, nice rifle, but I'm just going to have to say right now, I'm going to have to call it a no-go. Obviously, it's malfunctioning. I can't get it to work with a gas system right now. Let me know what you think. Like I said in the comments, I'll talk to Ruger. We'll see what's going on. Ladies and gentlemen, this is what no BS testing is all about. If you like what we're doing here at the Turkey's Opinion, please subscribe, share this video, let people know what's going on, and until we see you next time, stay safe, have fun, and keep shooting.